So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rose McAllister and I'm the Manager for Formation and Education in Pastoral Ministries. And I warmly welcome you to the Pastoral Placement Presentation Day. Our presentation day today will be recorded and I ask that you place your microphones on mute until we have the opportunity for discussion a little bit later this morning. Before we commence our proceedings, we will start with an acknowledgement and prayer. Peda langa ya ne jongan pilyoko awabakalango ngatana ngarakalo kolango ngatana barengan ne kakilya ne parakoba tumana ngaye ne ngarakalo kerana na bariyede ne ngarakalo mba yolodaka pipalye ne bariyada paroka awabakalango koba marayo bongande karane ngaye ne tumana awabakala ngarakalo koro wabarongo pangaye koba ngatana komba Kaman bela nyeron kaila nora pedala kakelyoko. The Diocese of Maitland, Newcastle would like, like to acknowledge that we walk, work and learn on the land of the Awabiku, Berapai, Darkinyon, Kamilore, Wiradjuri, Wanarua and Waramai people. We acknowledge the spiritual connection to their land, the mountains, valleys, oceans and rivers that surround our schools. We pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging, and, and extend, extend that respect, respect to all people and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people visiting our diocese. So welcome everybody. It seems only fitting that we have this presentation during Advent um, as it's a real sense of renewal, um, a time for renewal, but also a renewal time for our church as well as we listen to some great um, presentations this morning. So the Partial Placement Program is only six years old and it's, a un it's very unique to our diocese, the Diocese of Maitland, Newcastle. We've seen the program grow and today we'd like to take the opportunity to let you know all about the wonderful ministry work the participants have been involved in. 
The first year program involves the opportunity to experience a range of ministries across a variety of agencies. This normally would take the shape of six hours per week over a four weeks in one agency as part of a rotation over a 10, 10 month program and four hours per week at one particular parish for the duration of the program. An addition to the placement is the participants are asked to develop a project which has been inspired by a need that they've seen in the community. I would now like to introduce Summer Harrison, a second year pastoral placement, to introduce the first year participants projects. Thanks Rose. Good morning all. I'm excited to be your MC for today and it's great to see so many beautiful faces who have joined us. The first year PPPs will be presenting their projects that they have established during the program based on a see, judge and act framework. The second year PPPs will be talking about their experiences within different ministries during the year and how they have seen their first year projects come to life within the community. It has been such a blessing to journey with all the participants and it has been so wonderful seeing them grow within themselves and their faith. I can't wait for you all to witness our journeys now. There will be breakout rooms halfway through to provide an opportunity for questions to be asked. So let's dive straight into it. Mary will be starting us off today with her presentation. On behalf of all the PPPs, I can say that she has been a great role model for all of us this year, and we have learned so much from her. Mary, what has been a highlight of your year participating in the Pastoral Placement Program? Thank you, Summer. The highlight of the program for me has been the diversity of experiences that have been offered. I have learned so much from experiencing places like Mum's Cottage and Seafarers, the training and the formation that has been given, the confidence and the team building within the group. And I would also like to say how this has all had a flow on effect in creating more meaningful relationships within my own parish. Thanks, Mary. Let's take a look at your project. Hi, my name is Mary Sultana, and this is my husband and three daughters. I'm a parishioner at St. Christopher's Madawi, and we have been living here for seven years originally from Sydney. I have had the privilege of being accepted into the pastoral placement program for 2021. Last year, I noticed an advertisement in the parish bulletin for applications for the pastoral placement program. The idea of having the opportunity to experience what the Catholic Church does on a ground level really, really appealed to me. I'm very grateful for being accepted into this program. My journey has been one rich in engaging with some pretty amazing people. Experiencing our church and its mission has been one so much more than I expected. There is such a large scope for people to use their talents that they have been gifted with. The, insp the inspiration for my project started in March 2020. It was early COVID and I was waiting to hear from my local parish if our rosary group was going to continue to meet via Zoom. After a few weeks, I didn't hear anything, so I decided to make some inquiries. It seems that this was not going to happen because Madawi Parish had at the time a predominantly older congregation and there wasn't anyone who was tech savvy enough to get this up and running. There starts my journey. There was about a dozen dedicated people who met each week to pray the rosary and I wanted to provide a space for them to continue praying together. So I created a Zoom space for this to happen. After a few months and a few teething problems, the Madawi Zoom rosary was up and running. In this time, we had a very cherished couple who I will call Tom and Anne, who had been parishioners of Madawi for many years. Both Tom and Anne were very active in our parish community, volunteering in various ministries. And both Tom and Anne were always there greeting us with a smile and a friendly chat. They were an integral part of our parish community. Tom became unwell and they were no longer able to attend mass, as is the story for many people. This being the case, 
it was my desire to have them included in our rosary so that at least they knew that their ex extended spiritual family was still there for them. They joined us a few times, however, this was not to continue. There were a few barriers to this being su successful, namely help with technology and care for Tom during the rosary. If he needed anything during this time, Anne would need to stop and assist him with his care. So they participated a couple of times with the help of their daughter and then they could not anymore. One time they mistakenly left their microphone on and listening to Anne pray the rosary with such devotion will always stay in my memory. So in honour of Tom and Anne, I have decided to call my project a priestly mission. When Natasha and Rose told our pastoral placement group that we would need to present a project, I knew that providing pastoral care was going to be my project ID. At St Bridget's, we do not have a pastoral care service for our three churches with a predominantly elderly community. We also have a large community of defence families and with our new school, Catherine Macaulay College, we encompass a broad range of people. So with all this in mind, I, I met with Teresa Braley and Rose McAllister to discuss my idea. With their extensive experience and knowledge of resources and support that there is available, they had a much wider and rich vision for me than just my parish, my Madawi parish community. They could see this reaching to our three churches, two schools, local community, and then spreading to other parishes to provide support to people who are feeling isolated, families needing meals, people needing a lift to mass, visits to hospital or nursing homes, maybe help with care for pets, or a regular phone call to check in on some vulnerable people, or a social visit for a cuppa and a chat. They have had much experience with people willing to contribute to supporting their community. I did one of my pastoral placements with Mum's Cottage. Seeing the amazing pastoral support and mission and outreach that Sister Helen Ann does with the help of many dedicated volunteers in Holmesville, involving many religions in the Newcastle area is very inspiring. I had a number of conversations with Sister and Lavina, a volunteer at Mum's Cottage, who has been working in hospitals supporting many people. They had a lot of knowledge and experiences to share. I also met with our parish priest, Father Joyce, to present my idea, who was happy to give his full support. Following this, we organised a meeting with Father James, our regular priest, Scott Donahoe and Peter Ankley, the principal and assistant principal of Catherine Macaulay College, and Loretta Haffernan, who is the Pastoral Ministries Coordinator for our deanery. The idea was received very well, as well as also connecting with the vision that Bishop Bill has to build a bridge between the school and the parish communities to grow our parish. So then we looked at what we would need to do to make this happen. And here comes some of the challenges in completing my project. My first step was to survey my parish and school communities to get an idea what people thought. As our community is predominantly older people and due to the lockdown situation, I was not able to distribute the survey that we had put together to identify where our needs are and how many would be able to volunteer some time to make this happen. Due to my connection with some of the parishioners, I was able to speak to some people about the, their circumstance and identify some of the existing needs. I have changed their names for privacy. I also went back and had a look at Tom and Anne's situation to see what we, would have, what we could have done better to support them during their time of need. I will start with Tom and Anne. In their circumstance, Anne needed help with setting up using Zoom each week till she became confident. She also needed support care for Tom whilst prayer was happening. In this case, we will look at supporting 
both Tom and Anne in technology, as well as support in caring for Tom. My next case study, whom I will call John, he is also a long-standing parishioner who has recently been diagnosed with Parkinson's. He has been living independently and recently has required some assistance. He has been able to gain access to community care through My Aged Care. However, he has found that he has been losing confidence to drive. His family have been supporting him with transport to doctor's visits, but they live a fair distance away and he doesn't have enough funding in his My Aged Care package until his package gets upgraded. So we will pair John with a volunteer to, who can transport him to the doctor and also to Mass. My last case study is Jan and Paul, who are married and Paul is suffering from dementia. Jan is his main carer and Jan has been struggling with her own health. She has spent a considerable time away in hospital having her knee replaced. They have been getting help through community support with visits twice a day, taking Paul for his morning and afternoon walks and also for some housekeeping. Jan is now at home and she is struggling with Paul's dementia. She is very stressed and having to be at home with Paul in lockdown is proving to be very challenging. Here we will look at providing Jan with respite care. This can be in the form of taking Paul out for a couple of hours in the community for a drive and some lunch. Also, Paul loves music. So maybe there might be an opportunity to take Paul to a local community event that he might be interested in. Following on from this, there is a legal requirement to meet safeguarding standards of our volunteers. This means that they will need to fill in required forms and undergo government checks, such as working with children checks, which are required for working with vulnerable people, and also a national police check, depending if their role involves money. There is also a responsibility by the Catholic Diocese in the formation of our volunteers. Currently, there is a program which is in the development stages. This will provide a 10 hour orientation and training course covering legal obligations, pastoral, spiritual and sacramental care, formation in aged care and grief and loss. So in summing up, my pastoral care project has been a pleasure and a big eye opener as to what is happening in our parish community. Doing this research and coming up with a vision on how I can live out my call as a baptised person to be a missionary disciple in my own local area is a privilege. Early last year, I was in a situation where some people were in need and I didn't know what to do or where to get help. Now I have a vision of how to offer pastoral care to those in my community and all going well, we will be able to make this happen in the new future for our locals. I would like to thank the Diocese of Maitland Newcastle for putting together this program. Teresa Braley, Rose McAllister and Natasha Brotherton for helping me in my research and guiding me as a pastoral placement participant. I would like to also thank Tom and Anne and the people in the case studies for allowing me to share their stories. May God be eternally with Tom who has passed away late last year. I hope you have enjoyed my presentation and those of my fellow participants in this wonderful program. Enjoy the rest of the day, peace to all, and thank you for listening. Thanks, Mary. It will be great to see how we can pastorally care for people who are in need. Our next PPP to present will be Alexander. Alex, would you like to share with everyone a valuable lesson you have learned while participating in the program? One of the most valuable lessons I have learned was to take a leap of faith. For me, doing this program would have is something I never would have imagined I would be doing in the future. Like I just couldn't imagine myself doing it. And I'm I have to say at the end of this program, I'm very glad I did uh, take a leap of faith and do this program. It was a very eye-opening experience and it will be a very 
experience I will hold for the rest of my life. I can most certainly agree with that. Let's take a look at your project. Hello, my name is Alexander Tooth. I came down from Lismore in 2019. I was a part of the ACYF group with our bright green shirts as seen in the picture to the right. My project idea. I decided to do YCS Junior, which is a program for social injustice for schools based off YCS programs. The idea behind the program is a, for a way for kids to learn and interact about social injustice within their schools and hopefully make a change. I observed that there was a YCS group running within the diocese, but there wasn't anything like that in Singleton. I then judged that it would be a great idea to not allow just high schools, but primary schools as well, to be able to participate in YCS. So then I acted with Ailish to create a YCS program for primary schools so that they too may be able to experience YCS. What is YCS? YCS, or Young Christian Students, is an international movement that empowers school students to take action around social injustice within their school. YCS allows the students to be in charge and decide what they want to focus on and be an agent of change themselves. Why YCS Junior? I think YCS is a great program that, is, that was readily available and I really like the idea of allowing students to run it with supervision so that they could be the change they envision. With the help of Ailish, it was adapted and changed to better suit a younger audience. I had investigated outlets like this and there was none in the parish. What the program looks like. Week one to four is all about learning and acknowledging social injustice around us and what is possible solutions as well as games to lighten the mood while linking them to, with talks and reflections of the topic for that week. The first week is mainly focused around allowing students to see social injustice in the world, to learn that it exists and what it is. The second week is all about how we can cause social injustice, even if we don't mean to, which leads into week three, discussing how we can help fix it and whether we are the cause, whether we mean to be or not. Week four is all about seeing the social injustice within the school, then identifying an issue that the kids want to focus on, such as bullying. And then our goal for this week will be to allow the students to understand the impact of a social justice issue, for example, bullying, and how it will affect them and others. Week five is all about judging, judging what we can do to help fix the issue that the students picked in the previous week. Our ideal goal is to move forward and implement the actions or steps that need to be done to allow a fix to happen, such as bullying and making a body bench. Week six is all about action. Acting on our chosen issue and how do we do? The main goal of this week is to identify if we made an actual difference, if we hit our goal, and then reflecting on our actions and seeing how we did, um, whether it was good or bad, what did we accomplish and could we, could have we, could we have done it better? Where to from here? The ideal goal would be to have a pilot early next year, as well as adjust the program and change that as needed. Then once it is the best possible state, we hopefully allow to give it to all the schools across the diocese. And then even if the students don't do YCS in later years, I hope that all students will get to experience this at the primary level, just to get an experience of leadership and have an understanding of social injustice and what they can do to help, whether it be in their parishes, schools, or even just the world. That was my project. Thank you for listening and hopefully it will become a reality. Congratulations on such a great initiative, Alex. It will be exciting to see the program on a primary school level. I would now like to invite Asha to present his project. Asha has been a very valuable member of the PPP and has brought many skills to the program and utilised these to establish his project. But before we hear about the project, what has been the highlight of your journey, Asha? Uh, the highlight of my journey has been 
the two placements are one of the two placements I had in the diocese, one being at Mum's Cottage and one being at Lochinvar, the library. I appreciated those two experiences because of the time I spent with the Sisters of St. Joseph. Um, firstly, at the Lochinvar library, when I wasn't stacking books for Mandy, uh, on three occasions, I spent time with Sister Maureen and she taught me about the history of the Sisters of St. Joseph's and in particular in Lochinvar. And I appreciated their charism and how that reflects sort of in our lives of how we should, we shouldn't just be addicted to sort of the things of the world. We should try to go where people's needs are and to the fringes as sort of Jesus did and not just sort of depend on ourselves, but really be there for others and not just ourselves, I suppose. And I appreciated Sister Helen Ann in um, Holmesville in that she's always there for the community, the local community in need. And she's done that for a long time and she really depended on herself and I suppose others. And in the same way that the Sister St. Joseph in Lockenbar essentially just showed up and then said to the community, well, you have to help us. I think it was one of the bishops that said, oh, you should go to Lockenbar because the community will take care of you. But still at the same time, they uh, depended on Providence to be able to survive. And they didn't really hold back in terms of what they did. So in the same way, I think um, people tend to be scared in terms of doing that, but they, they were never scared of doing that. So I, I think that, that would be a big takeaway of not being afraid if you, if you have a vision. Awesome. Let's look at your project. Good morning, everyone. This is my presentation for the Pastoral Placement Program project. It, my project is a youth mentoring program. The gap I saw was a connection between students that leave diocese and schools and their development after school in terms of what they choose to do after school, whether that be study or work. And what I also saw was in our parishes and established church networks, there is a large amount of practicing Catholics who are in different professional spaces, whether that be teaching, partial ministries, in medicine or law. And these people are quite willing to help young people. And what I see in young people is a tendency after school to do things maybe because their peers are doing it or because they think it's prestigious or because they want to be something where really it's unrealistic and perhaps by being mentored by someone older and wiser than themselves they can get an idea of what's actually involved in doing things such as medicine or law what what does a lawyer actually do what does a doctor actually do and not just do things for the sake of doing them and to also form that person in a moral moral way, moral dimension, because a lot of employers, important thing is to say, you're honest. Honesty is a very important thing when it comes to employing someone, because if you, and especially trust, if you can't trust someone, then it doesn't matter how good you are academically, they can't trust you, they won't employ you. And... When in doubt, the um, scripture always used at any retreat is the road to Emmaus. And this directly inspires this project because in the road, road to Emmaus, you see two disciples walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, distraught, lost sheep, in need of a shepherd. And who comes to their aid? Jesus, the shepherd. And they're distraught because... Jesus has just been crucified and suddenly he turns up to console them, to guide them, to give them one important thing, conviction of what they're doing and why, why they're doing what they're doing. And in this same way, I would hope that people get formed both professionally and spiritually in such a program 
by having a connection to someone that is in the field that they want to be in and it can tell them you know what they need to do to get where they are and they can really see whether this person is up to it and also to form them as the whole person so <laughs> this is from the chosen the picture that you're thinking of but think of it in a modern context i suppose and the actions we'd like to take is to connect these professionals with these school leaders or people early in their university studies and to organize professional and spiritual formation and these would be things such as connect events which would involve having career guidance and development and some Asia, which would be more more optional not to discourage people from coming and to ensure this program is being as efficient as possible we would regularly undertake surveys to see what what we could we do more or what could we do less and make it as impactful and meaningful for the students and the mentors so they get the most benefit out of such a program and so the aims is mainly to be able to help students discern their future work and goals and what they want to do for a vocation and to create a safe space for space for students to share about their faith life goals and to build a community of people that i would hope would become lifelong friends and to have i would say a loose connection to the church and these are a list of the type of events we want to put on and how how are we going to, going to do this i would propose doing a pro forma to a group of catholic professionals and school leaders through established networks and then essentially acting as um, the middleman and creating a mutual agreement between both and the different professions could include things such as medicine law engineering entrepreneurship data science media and our application forms looks like looks like something like this for a mentor for example so just basic details about who they are the reasoning why they want to become a mentor have, have they been a mentor how they hope to contribute and what they would gain personally and ideally we'd put on some kind of training sessions none of them have done it before or sort of what we would expect would happen during a mentoring session a mentoring session might be something once a month maybe in, informal such as a coffee catch-up between a mentee and a mentor where they could talk about things like planning goals what, what are you doing just discussing why you're doing it so that would be the first thing to link the mentees and mentors for them to have regular mentoring sessions and the next sort of thing to do would be to have five monthly connect events. So that would be the aim of that would be to build community and it would could involve talks, meetups, um, an interview with a professional, a range of fields, and that would expose a large group of students to the potential what they could do in the future as a profession. So take a form of a talk, a panel, a workshop um, on practical skills, such as how to interview for a corporate career or how to write your resume or some basic um, interpersonal skills, a whole range of things, maybe etiquette. etiquette. Um, so a sample of a Connect event that I conducted was with Dr. James Sullivan, where he shared his spiritual and life journey and how his faith was really connected with where he came from and where he's ended up as a doctor so and you know the basic way he became a doctor what he actually had to do what did that involve and so he gave a bit of both worlds in terms of you know what how, what does my faith have to do with what i'm doing for my work and vice versa 
So this was the promotion we put on Facebook. So I learned about how to do all these sort of things, how to organize it. And the feedback we got for this event, some of the main feedback was that it would be good to have a large range of diverse people to draw on in terms of the speakers. And for this to be a regular event, and also for it to be in, per in person, because for example, in person, you could have coffee and cakes and um, food that might draw more people to come and uh, for people to meet up after and before. And a social event at the end of the year, for example, uh, if it was big enough, it could be a, a ball or, or also an optional retreat, which would be more the spiritual side, but I would emphasize that some of the more spiritual things would be more optional um, in, in the interaction between mentee and mentor. The mentor would probably share, share their faith, but they wouldn't thrust it on them. They wouldn't Bible bash per se. And the team that would need to be organized would be a coordinator, someone to link with the schools, and I would hope the, the chaplaincy would be involved as well. And the coordinator would be doing the bulk of the work in terms of coordinating all the events, um, answering any questions or any complaints or these sorts of things. And my, um, my contact details, and this, this is actually is an active website, but youth mentoring program.org.au. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for listening and yeah. Thanks so much, Asha, for sharing your project. It will be great seeing the youth mentoring program come to life in the community. Our next participant to present will be Tian. Tian's strong faith from a young age has been inspiring to all of us. She has been involved in many youth ministry events and has been expanding this during the pastoral placement program. Tian, what made you apply for the PPP? I wanted to apply for the pastoral placement program because I wanted to explore my faith in a different kind of way. And I also wanted to learn more about the diocese and what it had to offer through the program. Wonderful. Let's look at your project. Hi everyone and welcome to my and welcome to my project presentation. My name is Tian and I'm looking forward to sharing my project with you all. I'm from a beautiful coastal town called Port Macquarie on the mid north coast. I lived a whole 19 years of my life living in Port Macquarie. I went to school there, had my first job there, and was baptised there as a baby. I moved to Newcastle at the beginning of 2020 to begin my university degree in a Bachelor of Social Science and Human Services. My goal was to become a detective or work in child protection. However, I have recently put in a transfer to study nursing to become a midwife. In my free time, I love to read, especially Harry Potter, going to the beach and playing basketball. A fun fact about me is that I was confirmed and received my first Eucharist in 2017 at the end of year 11, and it was one of the best decisions I have ever made. My project is all about giving back to the community. I saw a need early on when conducting and planning what my project was going to be. I saw that people needed to receive something beautiful. COVID has been such a difficult time for everyone. And it was important to me that people in the community received a beautiful gift. I was able to judge quickly what I needed to analyze. I needed to make sure that the gifts I was sourcing were appropriate for the people receiving the gifts. And I had to judge many other components such as funding, sustainability, and how successful my project would be. I acted fast, working with a small team to make my project come to life. I acted to make sure that the gifts were sourced and they were funded by a wonderful society at the University of Newcastle. I remember applying for the partial placement program, 
not knowing if I would be worthy enough to serve in a way that would push me outside of my comfort zone. But I am so glad that I applied. Being a part of the program has been nothing short of amazing and has been one of the most fruitful things I've done in my life. Coming from a small town that only had one parish to a city that has well over 30, being able to work in so many agencies such as St. Vincent de Paul, Mum's Cottage, the UON Catholic Society and more, to visualising and bringing this project to life and making lifelong friends has been a dream come true. The beginning of my project, Gifts of Gordium. I remember sitting in one of our monthly PPP gatherings where we had to think of the project ideas and I just sat there thinking, hampers of hope, hampers of hope. The dream was to make up hampers of food, necessities and small gifts for families or individuals in need who may have needed that extra slice of hope during the COVID lockdown. After speaking with Tash, we spoke about some ideas and how there are already agencies and organisations out there that make hampers like these. This is where messages of hope then sparked from. The idea to create little bundles of joy with an attached message of hope full of different items to bring hope and joy to the lives of others. I worked very closely with Marianne and Rosemary and after much research we came up with my final project name Gifts of Gordium. Gordium being Latin for joy and happiness. The purpose of my project. There was a lot to think about for my project. I definitely knew it wouldn't be easy. I needed funding to, make, to be able to make these gifts and I needed support from people around me to bring my project to life. A lot of research was involved in the leading up to my project. Working closely with Marianne and Rosemary, we were able to make 50 bags from the generous donation and funding from the UON Catholic Society. The purpose of my project is simply to spread joy and love to bring smiles and beautiful gifts to those in the community, to show that they are seen, heard and loved. The vision of the Diocese of Maitland, Newcastle is to live the joy of the gospel and share it with the world. Hence why my project is solely based, solely centred around bringing joy and love into the, uh, the lives of others so that they know that they are loved by God and those in the community. As mentioned in my previous slide, the UN Catholic Society so generously provided funding so that I was able to create my first 50 gifts. Sustainability and funding were and are such a big part of my project. Being able to source gifts and be able to work in partnership with societies such as the Catholic Society mean a lot to me and the project, as it means I'm able to keep my project up and running and I'm looking forward to seeing what other agencies I may be able to work with in the future for my project. As you can see in the image below, these are the first items that for the first 50 gifts, and it was so wonderful to, see, to be able to see the items that we had sourced from the funding of the UON Catholic Society. The making of the first 50 gifts. As you can see in the slide, the photo on the left is the very first gift I created. I was absolutely stoked and a little bit taken aback when I realised I'd created the first gift, but after the photo I realised I had another 49 to go, so I threw my phone across the room and got back to work. I had a little setup going in my room to, make, to be able to make the gifts efficiently and make sure that each gift had each item. The next two photos are the final products. The first 50 gift bags took up most of my room and I don't think I could sleep, see my floor for a day but it was so worth it knowing that all the hard work had finally paid off. The process, challenges and highlights. There were many challenges and highlights when thinking of my project, planning my project and putting the gifts together. It has been quite a difficult ride. It has almost pushed me to my limits and I've really struggled. There was a point where I doubted myself like I've never had before. I almost completely restarted my project and came up with something completely different. I didn't think I was going to be able to do what I've done. I cried lots and doubted pretty much all of my abilities and that was the biggest challenge I'd faced. Although I doubted myself so much and really put myself down, I received so much support from my fellow colleagues, friends and family. However, seeing these, the first 50 gifts and hearing feedback from people that received them made all the breakdowns worth their while and that was the biggest highlight for me. 
Working with Marianne and Rosemary, we were able to source a variety of gifts. As I have stated many times, the gifts are all about bringing joy and happiness to people through a simple and beautiful gift. The gift bags were filled with goodies such as a prayer pack, which included a rosary, prayer and intention cards, how to pray a rosary card and more. In the gifts were also things like a plant pot, paints, seeds, paintbrushes, pens, a journal, affirmation cards and a small chocolate. In the middle in, of the slide there are beautiful cards Rosemary was able to create and I placed them at the front of the small prayer pack so that people were able to know what Gordium stood for. The four cards surrounding that are the, the four affirmation cards that I made that were individually placed within the prayer packs. It is so important to me that people know their worth and that is why I created these affirmation cards for the gifts. What have I, what have I learned about myself during this project and the making of it? This project has taught me many, many things about myself and the environment around me. It has shown me that I am capable of things beyond what I could even imagine I could do. I have grown so much as a person and have come to the realization that I can do anything I set my mind to, no matter how big or small the task may be. I have taught myself that it is okay to have off days and to doubt yourself, as long as you can pull yourself back up and keep working hard. It is important to know that you can rely on others when things get tough and that you are never alone. Through all the doubt, a quote from my all-time favourite movie, The Lion King, says, never forget who you are. And this project has made me realise how capable I am of anything I do. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to present my project to you all. I hope you enjoyed and God bless. Thank you, Tian. It has been amazing how your gifts of Gordium have already had such a significant impact on the community. I'm sure everyone here can't wait to see how your project grows in the future. We will now hear from Adele, the last first year PPP. Adele's enthusiasm, motivation and dedication has been greatly shown throughout the year and has shone through during the creation of her project. Adele, what has been the best part of the program for you? Thanks, Summer. Trying to pick the best part of the pastoral placement program has been really hard, but I'd have to say the people that I worked with was really a highlight. The whole PPP group has given me beautiful memories that I will never forget. Let's look at your project. everybody. My name's Adele Brotherton and I'm a pastoral placement participant of 2021. I'm 21 years old and I'm currently studying a Bachelor of Law and Criminology at the Newcastle University in hopes to become a criminal defence lawyer and a criminal historian. I'm a keen amateur horticulturalist and the owner of over 80 indoor plants which creates some healthy discussion when the family wants to use the kitchen. I'm also the proud parent of 20 month old Lily the Grudely. The pastoral placement program has been a unique life experience. I've participated in numerous faith formation opportunities, such as foundations and CPE, relationship education, and the new RCAA process, led by the beautiful sister Louise Gannon and the always entertaining Father Andrew Dewan. I also received training in compliance and project management and enjoyed a weekend re retreat with the whole pastoral placement team. I've also been fortunate enough to work in several agencies and service providers within the diocese. These include Mum's Cottage, St Vincent de Paul, Catholic Care and Research and Archives. I was also lucky enough to be a part of St Joseph's Parish in Toronto, which was at first led by Brenda Mannix and is now led by Kristen Boyd. As part of the pastoral placement program, we're asked to create a service that assists people in our parishes and wider community where we believe there is a need. As I like to do everything at 110%, I have two projects to show you today. 
My first project today is one that I didn't even consider to be a project because I didn't think it was big enough. After doing it since July, I can see that it is very big and very vital for the growth of our diocese. Children's Liturgy has been a massive part of my time in the pastoral placement program. And after going into lockdown, I was really upset at the fact that I couldn't continue it anymore. So with discussion with the parish, I created Children's Liturgy Online. Toronto Parish now has a page on their website where families can access all the readings and activities I would have used for that week. I've also added short 40 second videos to briefly explain to the children the readings and activities for that week. Within the first two weeks of having Children's Liturgy online, I had responses from families telling me how much they enjoyed the activities and how they were excited for next week's update. Just look at the happy customers for yourself. Then on the 17th of October, we trialled the first Children's Liturgy Zoom. For our first go, Christopher and I think it went swimmingly. Together we prayed the reading, had a goal reflection, and prayed the Our Father all together on Zoom. It may have been out of sync and confusing, but watching children smile while praying our most sacred prayer made it the best praying I've ever seen. My original goal for this project was to keep the massive amount of kids we had coming to the parish each week interacting with the gospel. Now I've started, I see that we could make it so much bigger. I want to create a diocesan-wide children's liturgy online where any children's liturgy leaders, parish members or families can access and participate in that week's activities. Everyone knows how important it is to keep children in our church and I know for myself and many others, children's liturgy was and is the way to do it. It made me feel like I belonged to the church and that it had a place for me when I was younger. Now as an adult, I still find my place very much within children's liturgy, using my gifts of creativity and genuine interest in making church fun for kids. I would love to see this become a role in the diocese where two or more people are hired to be children's ministry coordinators. They would provide resources for the diocesan children's liturgy online every week and run a Zoom every first and third Sunday of the month. They would also go to each parish and help start up a children's liturgy. They provide training and resource packs with everything they would need to have a great start. Now for the Bigger Than Ben Hur project. Now I'd like to warm you up with a reading from Psalms. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Throughout the year, I found the diocesan community often to come together for faith formation opportunities and to get set tasks complete. Although both things are very important, it feels that sometimes the joy part is missing. And as the Diocese of Maitland, Newcastle, we are asked to live the joy of the gospel and share it with the world. We should be celebrating our wonderful diocese. And what better way to do this than coming together to dance, sing, eat, and raise much needed funds for our non-for-profit service providers. The annual diocesan charity ball or the ADCB, because everybody likes a good abbreviation. This ball has several purposes. Firstly, to fundraise. Charity balls can be very profitable. This event is a great fundraising opportunity and will involve auctions with prizes donated from sponsors or local businesses. Secondly, the event speaks into our church community that fun is an essential part of fundraising. It reminds people that it's okay to have fun and serve others at the same time. In this technological age, charity balls improve and create organic face-to-face -face relationships between stakeholders and the charity in a social environment without the need for emails, phone calls and social networks, which is ultimately very beneficial to the charity. Personal and professional satisfaction. Deeper connection to work colleagues, generating a sense of community and belonging so a workplace is more than just a job or a place to go. If you're worried about dancing, don't. Leading up to the ball, we will have six professional ballroom dancing lessons, one afternoon per week for anyone to attend. If we're going to dance, we may as well do it well. The cost of the ticket will be $130. This will include entry to the ball, a three course meal, and entry into a raffle. There will be fun games and raffles throughout the night to raise money for the chosen charity. This charity will change each year. The venue I hope to use is the Newcastle Exhibition and Convention Centre. The dress code will be black tie and if everything goes well I would hope to hold the ball in November 2022. 
there will be live music and an influential guest speaker, such as 2019 Australian of the Year Richard Harris or 2021 Australian of the Year Grace Tang. If 150 people attend this ball, we'll raise over $14,000. I've spoken to several stakeholders throughout the year about this concept. I've received support from the Director of Pastoral Ministries, Teresa Briley, Manager of Formation and Education, Rose McAllister, Father Andrew Dewan, Father Matthew Muller. I've also cons consulted with some of the PPP team who have supported this idea and agreed to help wherever they can. I've also gotten quotes on venue, food and entertainment, and I've also picked my outfit for the evening. I still have several important stakeholders to talk to, but I hope that I get their support just as I have from the others. I believe it's time to reignite the flame for fun in our diocese through an old world concept that keeps the joy in the hearts of people in our faith-filled community. I'd like to thank Teresa Briley, Rose McAllister, Mary Ann DeLuca and Natasha Brotherton for providing me with the opportunity to be a part of the program and for a year that I'll never forget. Thank you. Thanks Adele. Both of your projects look amazing and may I say I love your outfit for the ball. It has been wonderful seeing all of the first year projects. And now we will have time to discuss in breakout rooms if you can see any of these projects working in your local area and how they would contribute to the life of the church as we continue our synodal journey. Can I please ask that one person from each group feed back to the larger group when we return in five minutes time? I hope you all had the opportunity to, to discuss each of the projects. I now ask a representative from each group to feed back what they heard from the discussion. We might start with room two. Um, we thought everyone did such an amazing job and we congratulate you all and we all, all were blown away. Um, we talked about a lot of things. We just, the major concern was such fantastic projects, but hopefully their support. We think the diocese have to do a couple of things. Definitely invest time, visibility and some money into it because some of those projects will fall over and it's been a waste of a year. Um, also visibility that our diocese is doing such an amazing um, work with the PPPs and so other dioceses should take note of that. Uh, we did love all the projects. The couple of ones we really loved were the um, online uh, children's ministry, the ball, the CSY junior uh, going from primary school into the high school and particularly the C Judge Act um, and the ideas of helping them understand that there's that connection into high school. Uh, Liz, can you help me? Um, the other was um, Ash's Project by that, the uh, professionals. Yep, so Ash's Project and the professionals. Um, we thought about it, that's a lot to set up. So maybe twice a year having a meal and a networking and having those professionals come and talk uh, again, investing in it. We really love the ball and especially Father Andrew and his dance lessons. So we're thinking that might be a, um, a great, yeah, great idea. And if he's genuine about that, we think many people would like that even just for the dance lessons. Uh, but we really can't believe the, the products that were produced and how beautiful these young PPPs are and the second years. And we just wish you really well. We asked about the projects from last year, what came off, because again, they pumped up a lot of time and energy in. Um, and we were pleased to see some came off, which is great. Um, but COVID obviously has put a spanner in the works for lots of things. So thank you for the PPPs and everyone who's managing them and supporting them. We'd love to see the diocese keep doing that. Thanks, Robin. Uh, would someone from room three like to share? Sure, I can do that. Um, we we only got to speak about a few projects because they're all so wonderful, but uh, the ones that we did speak about was Alex's um, Young Christian Students YCS Junior, which we felt had, um, well, obviously practical application and he's already trialled it. So that's been fantastic. Um, and we felt that it was really important that that children start as early as possible 
to be aware, to be able to see and judge what be behavior is, is appropriate and from their Christian values. So the, that bringing that into a junior program we thought was great. And um, we had Father Anthony in our group who was able to say that already there's um, support from service community um, in Rotarian Kids, I think it was. So it's something that in that parish where Alex is can really get going. And we think that, you know, we can see that happening in a real sense in that parish um, ongoing. So that was great. Uh, we also looked at um, Ash's Youth Movement Program, which we felt would need a lot of support, a lot of probably uh, external support from, from organisations and groups. There's a lot involved in that. But we were reminded that there was elements of that program that are probably already in our Christian tradition. Um, for example, um, we have the Catholic professionals and things like that. So there's existing support there already for that, perhaps. And so we think that's something that can be built on. And certainly, um, you know, the, the passion and enthusiasm to see that one go ahead would be just great. Um, the ball got to mention because um, the ball is something that has been trialed and been done very successfully in diocesan youth ministry in the past and it's um, had a lot of great feedback so we really applaud um, Agile for her enthusiasm there because that is something that's joyous and um, you know has been done so that's great to say that it can be done again and that's all we had time to get um, through. Uh, they're all great and congratulations to everyone. Thank you. It's great. Thanks for your contribution, Sharon. Would someone from group six like to share? We jump straight to group six. I think that was our group. Um, just from a general uh, discussion that we had had first, and, and I have to say, um, coming from the, the mission and outreach space too, it's just wonderful to see um, these presentations as an expression of um, our young people's answer to that call of missionary discipleship and, 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 and seeing a need um, or seeing a space and then stepping into that space. And one of the things we reflected on is the, the spaces that you guys have stepped into, um, many of us wouldn't have imagined to go in there ourselves. Um, so it's just exciting to see new spaces opening up. Uh, one of the things that uh, did excite our group um, was the way that some of these projects were engaging um, the whole community, parish, school, um, different spaces, and, and, and bringing them together uh, to work collaboratively, uh, going into new spaces such as the, the online space. Um, you know, using some, something simple as, as, as uh, mentoring as, as a way of gentle evangelization and, and, and faith sharing. Um, I don't know if anyone's had a chance to look at uh, this month's Aurora, uh, but there's some wonderful quotes there from Bishop Bill. And when he speaks about young people in the church, says, you know, in our young people, there is enthusiasm, there is, there is faith. And, and you guys are taking church to spaces that we aren't in. Um, and I think that, that, that's what was exciting our group. Um, from mission and outreach space, really keen to see um, uh, Ma Mary's um, pastoral care thing kicking off um, in the Raymond Terrace area. Um, and, and that has potential for a lot of parishes. Uh, coming out of COVID, uh, parishes looking for um, means of renewal and reimagining. Um, and a project like that that can bring together all the different um, parts of the community uh, working together. Um, I, I think there, there's a lot of merit um, there in that space. Um, and on a personal note, I have to say, uh, my kids have enjoyed children's liturgy um, at St. Joseph's. Um, our house still has not recovered from all the glitter uh, that's over our floor as a result of um, children's liturgy online. Um, but look, a lot of these things has, has um, merit of multiplication. And I just wonder if there's a way of um, sharing a summary or a synopsis of what's been done 
uh, with our various parishes. Um, and who knows, there may be, uh, I think it was Robin was saying, you know, how do we provide the resources um, and the support for these to kick off? You know, parishes might end up sponsoring individual activities or events. So share those thoughts. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. We all appreciate your positive feedback. Uh, so we have group eight next. If someone would like to share. I will share for our group and please also join me and the other members if I forget something. We just thought all presentations were great and congratulations to you all for your dedicated time, efforts and hard work that you put into the program. We just love the flexibility and um, of the PPP students to be able to pivot and adapt um, and integrate technology during a difficult COVID season. Um, so thank you for engaging fully and for sharing your work with us. That's such a privilege. Uh, we discussed mostly the YCS. So we talked about how great it was to have a program for young people and families to build connection and engagement and tackle, you know, those social justice issues like bullying at such an early age. We thought that was integral in schools. Um, and then Father Tom shared with us about Alexander being part of the parish we talked about the mentoring program and how wonderful an asset it is for professional people in the parish to not just turn up uh, to services, but to have the opportunity to walk and guide young people starting out um, and the practical way that could be implemented across all areas of the church. Uh, we loved all of uh, the enthusiasm and passion that was shared with us today. And we just thought it was a great opportunity for people who want to taste and experience um, you know, just a taste of ministry in a supportive environment um, and what great work that the program is doing. So it's great to see everyone feeling needs that are in our community, um, as well as the participants' uh, growth in their faith and passion and service to the church. Um, so we were really blown away by the experiences that everyone shared and the depth of um, their growing faith and walk with, um, with God. Um, we love their passion and heart, and we really think that those, all of those programs will benefit the church community, and we can't wait to see how uh, the programs implemented in parishes across the boxes. Thanks, Ruth. Before we move on, we'll just hear from Group 10. Thanks, Summer. I'll speak on behalf of our group. Uh, firstly, just wanted to say congratulations to the, the first year PPPs and your presentations today and the the projects that you've been involved in, um, they're all fabulous and got um, lots of possibilities. And like Brendan said, it's great to see, um, you know, looking for new missional opportunities and, and things that aren't happening at the moment to be able to look at spaces that you can work in. And that's the way um, that we'll have to be church um, in the future. So looking for those spaces that where, where ministry isn't happening or that needs to happen um, is a fantastic thing. So well done for that. Um, I, I'll just to, to emphasize, obviously, lots of other people have said it too, but the, the need for support for the projects and, and connecting with the, the people who can help, um, you know, looking at the YCS Junior, um, that's, a, that's a, a fantastic idea to work alongside um, Ailish with the work that she's doing in the secondary um, and to, to, to take advantage of the connections that you have. Um, namely, I'm one of them, um, obviously, to work through the Catholic Schools Office because um, we can actually help uh, with with that to, um, to 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 grow that connection and the possibility for work in our primary schools. So um, please make use of the uh, connections that you have to be able to help um, open some doors, perhaps. Um, so relying on the help that's there and the support that's there, uh, we did talk about that sometimes uh, in our parishes that there are people who are already stretched doing the work that they've already got. So it's important that the diocese helps and and, and the people can help where possible to make sure that these projects are supported. But more importantly, I suppose, than that is the bigger picture. And the bigger picture um, for me would be um, that, that we don't attach ourselves too much to um, the projects because what's more important is your life of discipleship. And if you think of yourselves as being people who are on steps on the journey of a lifelong discipleship, that, um, that there could be many projects that you get involved in over many years. If I was to add up all the projects that I've tried and some of them have worked really well and some of them haven't worked really well, that you do need permission for them 
uh, to, to not go well, if that's okay. And that's all right. We, we just, we, we look where the need is and we, we pick up and we move on. We look at other possibilities and we look for the role of the Holy Spirit, obviously, in guiding um, the projects as they go forward, because um, we're here to meet needs and we're here to, to do that, but it doesn't all depend on us. It's all God's work. Um, and so just to, to keep a sense of the bigger picture, whether the projects actually work or become the next big thing or not, really doesn't matter. It's about you and your connection to your faith and, and your community um, going forward. So, yeah, please don't take any knockbacks as a, as a negative thing. Please just see them as learning points on that journey as well. So thanks, Summer. What great advice. Thank you, everyone, so much for sharing. I'd like to hand over to Marianne now to introduce the second year PPPs. Good afternoon, everyone. I have actually had the great privilege of accompanying the young people in the second year of the pastoral placement program, and it's been such a privilege. At the beginning of this year, eight young, passionate and faith-filled missionary disciples embarked on a journey which had never been undertaken before in this pastoral placement program. Daniel, Jesse, Lachlan, Max, Natalie, Millie, Rose and Summer were each given the opportunity to bring their projects and passion for ministry to life. They were tasked with addressing the needs that they had identified within our community and within the church and to act upon this. The projects they presented in their first year of the program became the inspiration for their work in the second year. They were also empowered to use their many gifts to minister to young people within the diocese. Of course, as 2021 progressed, COVID restrictions placed significant challenges upon the group. However, this did not hamper their spirit, enthusiasm, drive and ability to adapt to the ever-changing landscape of life and of ministry. It indeed takes a village to raise our young people and the pastoral place of participants were able to further develop their networks and relationships with people in their parishes, the various agencies in our diocese, and also be supported by their wonderful friends and families. Your presence here today is a true testimony to this. I now have the great privilege of inviting our second year pastoral placement participants to share about their year in ministry. Each participant will share on the following. They will talk about their year in ministry and if they've seen their projects come to life. So I'd now like to invite Daniel Lee to speak. Thanks, Marianne. So my project last year was to create a diocese-wide event encourage more volunteers in parishes. But because of COVID and the scale of, my, of the project, uh, I focused this year on building the necessary skills to run such an event. And so this year I worked closely with many of my fellow PPPs and supervisors to create and run various events. I also have developed and tried the presentation of my um, project, which I hope to pilot next year in my parish. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I'd now like to invite Jessie to speak. Thanks, Marianne. Um, good, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so this year, um, I had the great pleasure of working with Natasha to help uh, bring Online Alpha um, to life for the diet, like, for the diocese um, and that was my that was carrying on from my uh, project last year as a first year so uh, so that just went so well um, and we even had someone join us all the way from Sydney which was a real blessing so um, so it was great to have um, great to have him along we had a couple of people from Musselbrook again which was fantastic um, and coincidentally I came across I fell in love with the Chosen series um, and I know that that's um, quite popular among um, a few of you joining us today so I had the absolute pleasure of working with Marianne, Rose, uh, Daniel, Max um, on creating a formation space around that series, which was fantastic. And uh, we were very, um, very humbled to have join us, Asher and 
uh, Summer, Tian, and those um, who joined us at the uni because we uh, created a formation space uh, within the Catholic Uni Society uh, around that first season of that series. So we got to do that in a face-to-face -face space um, and also took it online as well um, for a second run on a more diocesan level. So um, yeah, so it's just been a wonderful year and um, I'm based on everything that's been said, um, so many projects where it's, um, you know, really hands-on discipleship. Um, and now that's sort of what I'm starting to look towards. So thank you. I now invite Lachlan Burns. Alrighty. So my first year project was Water to Wine, a retreat day to the Manning region, starting at Foster Beach and finishing at Cranback, stopping in a winery or two. Um, that has developed this year into a program of retreat days called MN Retreats. Um, retreat days. While, while COVID prevented us from trialing any, the planning for all of them took place. Um, they aim to provide a family-friendly, faith-filled and fun day after two years in isolation. Um, each retreat involves an Aboriginal cultural experience, time for reflection, a meal and a mass at one of our diocese's churches. Our showcase retreat um, to Port Stephens currently includes a cultural experience at the Murroch Centre, a stop at Murray's Brewery, and time to explore Nelson's Bay before concluding with Mass. My other large project this year, which I worked on with Natasha Brotherton, was MN Kids, a K-6 youth group space. As a PPP2 team, we developed a curriculum for the program based on MJR principles. It aims to utilize a hub system to reach as many children as possible while, mit while minimizing costs. Due to COVID, its trial at the MacKillop Parish at Charlestown was delayed, but still remains ready to trial in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Lachlan. I now invite Max Noble to speak. Um, uh, this year I've been given the opportunity to be a part of um, the Mission to Seafarers and Stellamaris planning group to plan for a um, National Seafarers Day within schools. Um, this has been so valuable to me um, and to be able to gain knowledge and ex experience firsthand what planning these inf these events um, on a large scale um, as well. Um, this has kind of inspired me um, alongside with um, the p experiences within the PPP and the Seafarers experience last year and also being involved in Mr. Goji. Um, to create a project that kind of revolves around my degree in business and entrepreneurship and leadership um, and kind of combine my faith um, to create a project that revolves around servant leadership, um, which is something that I'm so passionate about um, and want to gain further knowledge on. So, yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, Max. I now invite Millie to speak. This year, I worked alongside Natasha to develop a leadership program called Leading to Launch, um, which is designed for high school age students to develop their leadership skills and unique qualities. And I also assisted Lachlan with the MN retreat days. Thank you, Millie. I now invite Natalie. Um, my project um, last year was to create a contemporary modern Catholic women's group, both in person and online, where all women felt welcomed regardless of faith, vocation and age. Over the past two years, we have grown from six young school mums having dinner together once a month to over 100 members in our online forum. So that's my daughter there saying hello. And about 30 women wanting to meet for dinner um, every month where we, um, where we organise guest speakers. There is... Um, there is a need to have a space for Catholic women to feel heard and to feel valued. And by journeying together, we are able to build long lasting friendships and to grow in faith. And working in women's ministry naturally led me to embark um, in studies about fertility awareness. So I'm currently training to become an instructor in the Billings Ovulation Method, which is managing your fertility naturally. So thanks, Marian. Thanks so much, Natalie. I now invite Rose to speak. Thanks, Marianne, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, last year, my project was um, forming a young adult group at Walls End Shortland Parish with the help of Max and Daniel. 
And this year I have focused on further bringing this group to life by creating a calendar of socialization, formation and outreach events for the young adult group. We appointed leaders for each of these elements. So myself on socialization, Max on outreach, and Daniel and my brother Curtis um, sharing the formation element. So we found this quite sustainable for each of us to take a part and lead the group. This group would not be what it is without the support of this core team and the support of Father Christian and the Walls and Shortland parishioners. Uh, at the young adult group, we aim to have an outreach purpose in everything that we do. So when we gather socially, for example, we have community trivia nights for Project Compassion, challenge night for Mission to Seafarers, and a movie night for the St. Vincent de Paul Winter Appeal. During lockdown, the young adult group moved to an online platform by hosting online games, formation and prayer experiences. And surprisingly, this online presence enabled the group to expand and reach more people. And the young adult group is growing in more numbers with people from all over the diocese. And the group not only reaches to those that are in the church, it also reaches and includes people that are not of the Catholic faith. And so it's very inclusive. And we look forward to our final social event of the year, which is a Lawn Bowls Christmas party that is supporting the MN St. Vincent de Paul Youth Conference. And we here we invite all the community to join us. So you may get an invitation, who knows? Because we don't just include the young adults, we, um, we also have events for everyone. Uh, we hope this group will continue to grow and thrive to outreach beyond the church walls to help all within our community feel a sense of belonging, joy and love. I have loved most of all that one action within the community can make a change to at least one person. And that is where change begins with the one. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Rose. And I now invite our MC Summer to share with us today. <laughs> Thanks, Marianne. So my first year program was Questions for Catholics, which entailed educational videos on various topics surrounding Catholicism. Some of these, as you know, included Pentecost, reconciliation and faith journey. So in my second year of the PPP, I interviewed Sydney Catholic youth and also members of my parish on certain topics. I ran into a bit of a roadblock regarding the videos being professionally edited. However, this hindrance led me to undertake a program of SRE teaching at New Lambton Public School. And I really enjoyed teaching the gospel to such enthusiastic, open-minded children. And I'm going to continue this next year and into the future. Um, being involved in the youth ministry setting and events such as The Chosen, Alpha, and certain high school retreats has definitely been a highlight for me. Thank you very much, Summer. As you can see projected on the screen was the wealth of mini ministry experience that our second years had um, available to them this year. We are now going to look at a, a video beautifully put together by the manager of the program, Rose McAllister, just to take you deeper into the second year and our young people's reflections upon that. This program has really opened my eyes to see the wider picture of life and become more in tune with the world and how I can truly make a difference. The number of different ministries that I've been given the opportunity to be involved in, to explore and gain experience from has been truly mind blowing. This program has been a surreal opportunity that I'll treasure forever, along with the friendships and connections I have made. Being a part of many diverse ministries, I've been able to grow in my faith which has been a huge step towards one of my goals in life, be the best possible person that I know I can be. The program enabled me to commit time to explore a wide variety of ministries while studying. It also provided regular opportunities for reflection, including Mystagogy Mondays, monthly gatherings, and following through the RCIA program with Sister Louise and Father Andrew. The past replacement program has helped me to grow pastly as it has opened my eyes to see the needs within the community and form me in the skills I need to respond. The PPP has allowed me to explore different ministries that I never knew existed, such as pastoral education, chaplaincy, and family ministry. 
It is through these experiences that I was able to discern my vocation, which is to work in pastoral ministries. Being a participant of the PPP led me to my current job of family ministry coordinator with the diocese. The opportunities and experiences that the program offered helped me to be qualified and capable of this job. Not only did I learn about different ministries, I also learned about myself. The program helped me discover who I am and how I can use my strengths and gifts in ministry. The opportunity to be involved in so many places and or spaces and um, and I've just been really, really grateful um, and feel really blessed and really honoured to have had the opportunities I've had this year. Um, so the ways I feel I have grown pastorally while working um, as part of the pastoral placement program um, are in the following ways. So I feel I have grown pastorally while working with others um, to create spaces for others to explore their faith by talking about individual journeys as part of a larger group environment in a Zoom space. By experiencing so many different ministries during the pastoral placement program, I have been able to grow pastorally and expand my knowledge of the diocese and its different agencies. In particular, I've grown a strong passion for children's ministries and making children know that they are loved by God and make Jesus known in the world today. The Pastoral Placement Program has assisted me to explore the different ministries of the Maitland Newcastle Diocese through connecting with young people to form relationships and empower these individuals to become actively involved in the church through living life as disciples of Jesus. The program has enabled me to grow through exploring children and youth ministry to develop a youth formation program to support the area of leadership and become an active member of the church. Throughout my two years in the program, I have grown both in my faith and confidence, developing into the best version of myself. The pastoral placement program has given me many opportunities to be a part of various ministries, like the liturgy council, youth ministry and parish ministry. And each of them has enriched and nourished me. It has taught me many different skills, such as leadership, accompaniment, and teamwork. PPP has not only supported me on my faith journey, but also on a professional level. The things I have learned have been transferable and has really helped me to grow as a person. The Pastoral Placement Program has given me the opportunity to discern a calling into women's ministry. It has allowed me the freedom to gather young and vibrant Catholic women from across the diocese for formation and fellowship. The Pastoral Placement Program has allowed me to build this ministry and to explore this area without feeling overwhelmed and with much needed support nearby. The Pastoral Placement Program has been such a significant learning experience for me. I have learned so many different things, from how to run a mystical reflection, to leading a Visio Divina, and also even video editing. I have had so many deep insights into my faith that I will take across all walks of life. I have appreciated the time spent in learning about the RCIA process with Father Andrew and Sister Louise. It has given us an insight into how to welcome and journey alongside our new brothers and sisters in Christ who have just been baptised into the faith. Insights. Um, I have further learnt about being flexible and the need to be adaptable in my facilitation when last minute things change. But when this occurs, um, I've realised how much of a blessing it can be as a way to reach a, much, a more widespread audience. Um, I have also continued to learn so much about my faith and relationship with God 
while working in collaboration with others and hopefully inspiring them to go deeper in their relationships with God too. The importance of a community. Without this PPP community that I have come to know and love, I would not be where I am now. They have supported me, guided me and encouraged me every step of the way. And it is them I have to thank for who I am today. And I want others to experience that too. Life is not meant to be walked alone. While sometimes we do have to go on alone, but life is so much more beautiful and awesome when you walk with others, especially for the community who truly cares for you and for each other. Over the past two years as a pastoral placement participant, I have learned so much, so much about myself, others, the community and the Catholic faith. The faith formation and training opportunities of the program have helped me to delve deeper into the Catholic faith and gain a rich understanding of the Catholic customs, rituals and history. I now have a deeper understanding of liturgy and what it means to be a baptized member of the royal priesthood. Learning experiences such as liturgy and worship, mystagogy and the opportunity to engage in the Christian formation course have helped me discern that I have a love of theology and I wish to pursue this in the future. Over the past two years, I have grown so much, learning about who I am as a person and who I am in relation to God. I now have a deeper insight into my strengths and gifts and what my God-given purpose is. A key element of the program is collaboration. As a member of the program, it has enabled me to work alongside individuals from diverse backgrounds and experiences to collaborate and foster growth into children and youth ministry areas. That everything requires lots of planning, how the diocese works, and how big and far reaching it truly is, and how scripture can relate to our lives today and the power. This program has been a massive learning curve for myself, but I don't regret any of it. There have been so many positive experiences that have arisen and been developed from the unique minds of all involved this year. And this is what I think makes PVP so special. This program has the power to combine individuals from unique life experiences and allows you to bring your unique ideas to life. However small your idea may be, it can be transformed, developed, and can lead you on unexpected paths of brilliance. My greatest highlight was when I got the opportunity to run events for young adults. To be actually out there ministering to others in simple ways has been truly a joy for me. It was amazing working in a team, getting all the prep work done, and then meeting up to set up the place and taking the time to pray, to remind ourselves why we are doing this in the first place. And finally, running it and seeing the smiles and laughter and hearing the good conversations. That has been my highlight. On a side note, not that it is any less, the PPP retreat was another highlight for me as it gave me the time to unwind, to get to know myself and my colleagues better, and to learn to encounter God in nature. The highlight of the past replacement program for me has been meeting all of the other participants who are like-minded individuals and journeying with them. 
At our monthly gatherings, we get to catch up and talk about what we have been doing and all of the different ministries we are exploring. It has been such an enriching experience and to share it with other people has been such a joy. My highlights for being part of the past replacement program this year um, has been having the opportunity to explore my, for myself the areas of ministry I am passionate about. Um, and I have also had a valuable experience collaborating with others uh, for the chosen um, and our formation spaces and also um, the opportunities that i got um, during the seasons of creation um, celebration um, from these spaces i have felt really inspired to continue working in a way to serve the community in a more hands-on way to be the hands and feet of jesus I need to work in such a supporting team to apply my skills to projects that I want to see come to fruition, including MN Kids and MN Retreat Days. One of the highlights of being a part of the Pastoral Placement Program is being able to journey with incredible faith-filled young people. Group formation has always been such a pleasure over the past two years as each and every one of these um, vibrant young Catholics bring a fresh new perspective to the gospel and in journeying together we are able to learn from one another and to grow spiritually together even if it's just for this short chapter in our lives it has been such there have been many highlights of the past replacement program but what comes to mind when i think of the ppp are the words love family and community the people that i have met over the past two years have become family the meaning of brothers and sisters in christ has come to life as we have journeyed together through the ups and downs of life even though we all come from such different walks of life, here during the PPP, we have come together and formed the bond of a family. With the managers of the program showing the love, care, support and guidance of a parent. Being a part of this community has been the highlight of the program. The sense of belonging I have found within the pastoral placement program will stay with me for the rest of my life. The highlight from being a part of this program has been meeting new people through placements and the other PPP team members. Through creating new connections from around the diocese has enabled me to grow in my faith and also my confidence. When I completed the first year program, my highlight included my placement with Mission to Seafarers, where I had the opportunity to complete ship visits and interact with the seafarers. In the second year program, my highlight was working alongside Natasha to develop Leading to Launch, a youth ministry program which enables young people in the diocese to explore their unique qualities and leadership skills while growing in their faith. I began this year with the goal of promoting the Mission of Seafarers and Stella Morris to as many young people as possible. Even though I did somewhat achieve this goal, it has led to so much more, which has probably been one of the biggest highlights of being a part of this program. Being involved in discussions for a National Seafarers Day within schools and the Seafarers experience last year has inspired me to create a presentation that combines faith and service and with my passions in leadership and in business. This has led me to on a different path and given me the opportunity to explore the question how can we become better leaders to serve the greater good in our everyday lives. I'm hoping to explore this topic further in future studies and explore the fundamentals of servant leadership to as many young people as possible because I believe it is a fundamental part of our everyday lives as Catholics today.
I would now like to invite Father Camillus, who is a chaplain at the University of Newcastle, but he's also journeyed with our amazing young people across the past two years. So I invite Father Camillus now to share a reflection. Yeah, thank you so much, um, all of you here today, and um, especially the participants. Um, six years, this program, it looks, it feels like 60 years because um, it has become popular. And um, I think anyone that likes what is good um, should embrace this. And I believe we all have embraced it. Um, I could remember at the beginning of this program that we had doubts if um, this would be a waste of resources, you know, like um, some would say it wouldn't be sustainable and other things. But looking back at it now, we would say that those who conceived this idea, you know, those who planned it and those who made sure it became real, um, they were actually inspired by the Holy Spirit. Because um, this program has helped um, our diocese in a way that um, we have raised young people who will be capable of guiding the church, um, not only in our diocese, but um, the whole of Australia to the right path. So on my own part, seeing these young um, men and women, their energy, their enthusiasm to work uh, has given myself hope for the church and um, for our diocese in particular. Um, I have watched most of you, I have worked with most of you say that um, this is a good investment because um, you not only do it because you're paid, but I've seen the passion um, that you have, you have invested in the places. Those of you who are working in parishes, those of you who have worked with us at the uni and other places, I've seen um, that passion in you, the desire for you to do something for God, not only to do something because you're paid to do it. Um, for the the first year, those who presented today, um, listening to you and also being part of your journey, some of you, um, Mary spoke about companionship. You know, the church is about companionship, accompanying people, uh, bringing those who are not as strong as others, helping them to encounter Christ. And um, Alex also speaks about um, social justice and helping people to cope or to stop bullying, you know, in schools and other places. And Asha spoke about mentoring. Uh, we have to uh, give what we have received. As we are mentored, we have to also try to help others on this journey. And Tian speaks about seeing, judging, and acting. You know, like we have to be sensitive to things um, we do and also to spread joy, to be able to uh, see the need, like Mary McKillop tells us, see the need and do something about it. And Adele, uh, also speaks about um, helping kids. You know, we have to catch them young, which is important. And also collaborating with others we are working with. Church is about community building. You know, we work as a community, we can't do it alone. And also the fun part, you know, bringing fun to what we do. I always tell people that um, um, we have to find something that would entice young people to come to church, especially after all we have been. We have to find something that will make it, you know, interesting for young people to come so that they wouldn't say that the church is about, you know, praying, fasting, you know, boring place. We have to make it entertaining to them so that they will know that we can still have fun while being children of God. So thank you all, you know, for uh, this task, for what you have um, given to us. Even though some of you have had challenges, you know, with parish administrators, with um, secretaries and uh, other things. So you have had those challenges with lockdown and other things, but you didn't stop. You continued because you know what you're doing. You're doing it because you're paid, you know, like it's like a good shepherd who is ready to die, you know, for his sheep. So you remain steadfast. None of you said because of lockdown, I can't continue, but you did, you know, when it wasn't possible to meet together, you use online and it wasn't easy. I appreciate all of you and I'm proud of you. For the second year, those who have done this before, you know, like uh, Daniel, Summer, uh, Natalie, Rose, and others. 
um, I also commend you know your steadfastness, you know, yeah, your you know your your ongoing you know support for the young ones, and also your your sincerity, commitment on your project. You know, listening to you, I was there last year when you all presented. I appreciated that and I was fascinated. But looking at you again, you know, continuing with it, I always see Max coming to uni with what he's doing, you know, like always hear also what Lachlan, Jesse, what you are doing. And um, but most of you are also part of our executives at the uni. So seeing all of you that it wasn't just about what you were told, but now you have come to see and you have taken it up yourself and you have been inspirational, you know, inspiration to uh, the younger ones. So I say today, please, I beg you, keep this flame. You know, I have a quote um, from the gospel according to Matthew, you know, five from verse, verse 15, where Jesus says, no one lies a lamp and put it under a bushel. Let your light shine, you know, before the people so that they will know that you're working for God, you're children of God. So let this light continue. I appeal to you. And... Um, we are here to support you. Any support you need, anything, we are here, you know. And I'll say to you, teach others what you have learned. So the PPE should, according to, you know, I will appeal to the diocese, to those who are in charge, to give this program a great support, you know, to make it a priority. Because um, this is the basic foundation, you know, investing in our young people is the best project you can think of. Let us not just um, think about funding or whatever, let us just make it a priority of you know, the program of the diocese because it is a step to um, re-evangelize, you know, to reinvigorate the spirit of those who have become tired and weak because of what we have been through in this diocese. Um, thanks to Bishop Bill, you know, May so rest in peace who has supported, who supported this program and um, was able to sign it off and um, the leadership of the diocese. The church belongs to the young people and we must invest in you, the young people. Like I said at the beginning, to you, Mary, Alex, Asha, Tian, um, to you, Daniel, Adele, Max, Jesse, Lachlan, Natalie, Millie, Summer, Rose, and others forgotten their names, who have sacrificed a lot of things, your time, your energy, your resources, and your fun moment, your private fun moment, because I know that sometimes you feel like doing something for yourself, but because of the program you have. You know, I say to you, I am proud of you. You know, I say to you, the church is proud of you. Uh, Bishop Bill will be proud of you. God himself is proud of you. you know? And um, I would always, you know, encourage you not to be afraid you know, to fail in your project. Don't be afraid to fail. You know, you, failure means you have learned how to succeed. So keep up with your project. And uh, like Adam said, it's not about your project succeeding, but it's about your having a relationship with God and bringing others to know God. So even if your project doesn't get to where you want it, don't give up. The most important thing is the relationship you have with God and your role to bring in others to experience that relationship. Finally, to everybody, I will say, let us all join hands, you know, to build the kingdom of God. And what's the best way than to build in the young people? You know, because the church, the leadership of the church belongs to the young people. And I would like to acknowledge and thank um, Teresa Braley, and Rose McAllister, Marianne De Luca, Natasha, and the others who have been involved or been part of this program um, for the wonderful work you're doing. It is not an easy one guiding young people. You know, young people are stubborn sometimes. So, but um, it's not easy. The work you do, um, guiding them, leading them. One of my highlights was spending time with you on the retreat. It was one of the best moments. I needed that up at that time. And knowing you closely, knowing, uh, coming closer to some of you, really knowing who you are, you know, help me to always have positive mind about the church. So today I'll pray for you and I'll support you my own way. And I encourage others, support you and all of us, let us work together to help these young people achieve what is their dreams. Thank you and um, God bless you.
Thank you so much, Father Camillus. And now we invite Rose McAllister, the manager of formation and education in this program to speak. Thanks, Marianne. I'd just like to thank all the partial placement participants for their energy, passion, devotion, and dedication. Your deep faith has moved mountains and planted the mustard seed in rich soil. Your ideas truly shine and are sure to bear much fruit. I would like to thank Summer for stepping up to be the MC for the first part of our presentation today. I'd also like to deeply thank Natasha Brotherington, Educational Officer in Formation and Education, and Mary Ann DeLuca, University, University Chaplain and Mission and Outreach Officer, for your energy and passion in working and walking beside each of the PPPs in 2021. Our late Bishop Bill was a true supporter of the program and in his legacy, we would love to see the program grow from strength to strength each year. So if you know someone who's interested in this experience, please encourage them to reach out. Uh, we would love to see this, this program grow. I'd also like to thank the service providers and the parishes for allowing this program to actually to come to life. So thank you very much, everybody. And to conclude, um, we might just watch, if you've got time, we've got a, about 10 more minutes left in the final little bit of the presentation. If I were to recommend this program to others, um, I'll probably have to say that it is both life-changing and you'll learn so much about yourself and about your faith. Yet it is so hard to sum up the partial placement program in just a few words. Due to the number of experiences that you'll be given, the truly inspiring people that you'll meet, and how you'll grow as a person in a faith sense, as well as your own confidence. It has inspired me to share my life experience with as many young people as possible and to continue to have a presence within my local church community. This program is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I'm so glad I took the leap of faith. The pastoral placement program is a great pathway into ministry work. There are a lot of opportunities available and I would not hesitate to recommend this program to anyone discerning whether or not to apply. Applying for the pastoral placement program has been the best decision of my life. The program has helped me grow in so many ways I never knew possible. The skills learned, the friendships made, the impact on the community has all made it such a significant experience. I would recommend this program to anyone who has a passion for social justice or wants to deepen their faith alongside beautiful individuals. It's a rewarding work environment, great people, a mixture of self-directed and prompted work, working on different things all the time. The program opens doors for exploring areas of ministry and in the second year program through discerning and selecting areas of ministry which most interest you in your career path are explored through independent and team projects. The first year program enables individuals to explore a diverse range of services within the Maitland Newcastle Diocese, enabling opportunities of individual faith development and networking with others. As a member of the second year program, it has enabled me to grow my faith and develop new skills applicable to my university degree. Through the PPP program, you will develop your faith journey as you are called to serve others. Because it is an experience of a lifetime. And I promise you, you will not regret it. There is just so much to say about this program, as I'm sure you heard from the previous clips. But if I had to give just one reason as to why you should give this a go, it would be because you would grow so much in just one year. In skills, knowledge, and in faith. I recommend others to join the pastoral placement program as it is an incredible opportunity to explore how to grow in faith. Um, while also exploring ways to serve your community. Um, and I can guarantee you, you will be surrounded by a team who are so excited that you have come on board and are looking forward to collaborating with you to help you achieve all the goals that you'll be setting throughout this program. For me, the past replacement program has been a life-changing experience. I would not be who I am today if I didn't take the leap to be in the program. It has not only provided me with a deeper understanding of Catholic beliefs, rituals and practices, but has given me a genuine confidence in myself and my strengths in ministry. 
You'll learn about yourself, discover your God-given gifts, and learn how to use these gifts. When you are a participant of the program, you'll be part of a community of change, a community that works towards helping all feel like they belong, and a community that responds to needs and makes a difference. The best advice I can give is if you have the slightest calling to explore the pastoral placement program, take that leap. You never know what one decision will lead to.
Thank you so much, everybody, for coming along and joining us this morning, now the afternoon. I know we've gone a little bit over time, but um, I believe it's been well worth the, the journey. Um, to conclude, I'd ask Father Camillus if you would bless us. Um, please mind, um, plead with you. Uh, if you could um, observe one minute silence for our Bishop Bill, who has supported this program. Um, before I give the final blessings. May the soul of Bishop Bill and the source of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity given to us to work together for your kingdom. We thank you for the young people that you have entrusted your church to. And we thank you for all those who are mentoring them and supporting them, those who have given their time, their resources and their energy to help nurture and uh, guide these young people. And we, we ask you today to support them, support their project, support their desire, support all they are doing to make sure that your church is channeled to the right path. And may you give all of us the grace to continue to be faithful to you through Christ our Lord. Amen.